four long days, mornings up at four, sitting by five, hunting till 8.30, walking, heat, 21, but it all paid off. That's what patience and perseverance will do. You're gonna get your animal if you keep trying. Stick it out, stick it out, stick it out. They're there. It's not you. A lot of times hunt means luck or else it'd be just called shooting. So obviously things worked out because I'm at self Taxi. Taxa. I mean, Regina, Saskatchewan. We're going to go uh, see what he can do. Okay, as I'm skinning this mule deer for a head mount, what I want to make sure on a velvet animal, the velvet skin itself is actually growing onto the, the hide of the, of the uh, head. So I have to skin and cut the uh, velvet and the hide apart so that it doesn't rip the velvet. Sometimes if you pull it the wrong way, the velvet will rip up uh, up the antler and uh, cause some damage to the velvet. So you have to be fairly cautious that that doesn't happen. So I'm just going to keep skinning it uh, forward to the nose, I guess, around the, around the burrs of the uh, deer. Like I said, just being cautious that I don't give a big yank or pull or whatever, just so that the velvet doesn't go ripping up. And it, it'll come off in little spears, sort of up the side of the uh, antler itself if you pull it the wrong way. So use your knife and just kind of pull it uh, gently with your left hand, if you're right-handed, and then cut it away from the velvet with your knife. For a hard-boned deer, I usually use just a, a small hammer and a screwdriver and kind of tap the burr, the skin away from the burrs, but uh, I can't do that when it's in full velvet or it will tear. I've cut off the antlers. I've done my measuring, my skinning of the head for a head mount. Cut off the antlers, boned it out. There's no flesh or brain in the cavity. So now what I'm going to do is put a puncture in the tip of each antler, okay, with a uh, knife or a, some sort of an awl or a pin on each point. And what I'm doing is giving a escape route for any formaldehyde or uh, blood that's still in the antler itself. So do that to each point. And I do have my formaldehyde pretty much ready here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it outside because this formaldehyde is very strong and uh, I don't want to get overly sick from it. So I'll do it outside in the wind and it should be good enough I can still pop it. That's the stuff I used to use in junior high, in science high school, class. Preserving your frog. Okay, I've got a hypodermic um, that I've sucked up some of the formaldehyde mixture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search to see if I can find a good vein that I can inject it into. Uh, everybody has seen the vein marks and uh, channels after the uh, velvet uh, is removed, but to see if I can inject one here now. Now it's it's at a stage where the velvet or the antler is very hard, so um, it may be dried up too much. But I may be might not be able to get a a good injection into it. But I'll give it a try and see. Well, there we go. Do you see that up on the tip right here? You see a little droplet? There is, there is a droplet of formaldehyde that's worked its way out. I did inject. Uh, there's blood seeping back out of it. Okay, so that antler should be okay on the inside. So now what I'll do is I'll try to get one on the 
on the uh, uh, G2 actually. I'm trying to find it. I'm used to doing uh, caribou more than deer, so caribou, I've got a little more space to work with. Got one good, a good one there. Do you see? Do you see it coming up on the tip? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That means the formaldehyde has reached all the way from the base of the tip to the tip. That's what we want to see. So you see how it's pouring out through the uh, injection hole here? Right. So that's that means I've got a good circulation there. So I'm just going to go a little further down. Use my thumb and just my thumb and nail and try to find the actual you can find the vein or the track where the uh, the channel in the antler where the vein as you can see I'm all rubbered up and uh, goggles and I should have a respirator on but just for this footage here I'm just uh, trying to show you show and explain it that's why we're outside I'll feel pretty honored if I'm the only one with the uh, velvet uh, deer in here, but I doubt that you're going to get a bunch more here. I'll get some week. velvet antlers, but... Next week, because um, they're starting to shed already a little bit. The whitetail, where I just was, out uh, in Diefenbaker, they're already shedding theirs. But the mule deer aren't right now, as you can see. I may not be able to inject them. Now, this is the best way to preserve them, okay, I believe. Okay, so there's another way? Uh, there's other ways, which is uh, freeze-drying. Um, uh, you have to have a freeze dryer to do that, or um, a big freezer with uh, lots of air that can uh, circulate um, so that it does dry it out. Um, there is uh, a method of tanning, actually. So it would be having a container mixed with a pickle tan, and you actually tan it on the... Um, so there's, there are several ways of doing it. This would be probably the quiz and most absolute if you can get all of the injection if somebody's points. up in the bush and they have no options probably best just to stick right in the freezer right yeah if if there's no other way a freezer will preserve it it'll stop it from doing anything it won't uh, it won't do anything basically as far as preserving it but it'll just keep it from spoiling so until you can get it to a taxidermist um, freezing it is probably the best way to save it So I'm just going to keep injecting here just until I'm satisfied that it's going to be uh, preserved. How long have you been in taxidermist, Glenn? Um, I started doing taxidermy when I was 13 as a hobby, and I'm uh, should be retired by now. Uh, the last, I said, the last four, five or six, seven years, I guess, I've been going off and on up to the Northwest Territories and working at it. A caribou hunting lodge which is a lot of fun it's a lot of work but uh, we get to see a lot of neat animals uh, meet some nice nice people from all over the world hunters from who knows where so what will that I understand that'll save the veins now how does that preserve the actual fur or the it it the actually velvet? the the velvet is a skin that grows Okay, that grows. So the veins and arteries go all through. So we're not just hitting the one vein. As it feeds through the whole antler system, it uh, goes through the whole velvet itself. So it is pre preserving the whole velvet uh, rather than just the. the so this is all injecting. you'll have to do to preserve this thing? Yeah, that should be it. We'll See here. See how red that is coming out, eh? Yeah. That should do it, Chad. Cool. Now uh, we're just gonna leave it outside here for a while just to drain. 
uh, like I said, formaldehyde is nasty stuff, and don't ever keep it inside yes. of a house. Uh, and uh, normally I would be wearing a respirator, but well, everybody that wants to do this should come see a taxidermist like yourself. All right, sounds good.